Yeah. You managed to bring your camera? It was like uh, Weary had gone through an eco challenge race. Uh, he had walked, he had gotten on a bus, he had walked some more. And when you see him come up the driveway, he's got a backpack and a hat, and he looks like a hiker. And he's weary, thirsty. Hey, sir, sir, could you come back over here, please, and have a seat right on there? You seem to be in a hurry there. Go ahead, have a seat right there, please. All right. Go ahead, please sit down. Why are you in such a hurry to get over on the other side of the fence? Oh, nothing. I thought I was looking for somebody, and that's all. I'm sorry. And who were you looking for? John Pedersen. John Pedersen. Yeah. And why were you looking for John? Well, I was going to talk about some business. And what business was that? I'm going to try to do try to find a job somewhere, and I heard about John Pedersen. And why did you come to this house looking for John Pedersen? I had a phone call. A phone call. Yeah. From. Um. I, I, in fact, I don't actually know the guy, besides the fact that his name is, um, I don't even remember his name. It was about five hours ago. I've been walking. So you were just walking down the road, and you thought that this fellow with a construction company lived in this house? Somebody told me that he lived... Somebody? Who is somebody? A young man on the phone. A young man on the phone. And how did you reach this young man on the phone? I had, he had called me. Or he had called you? Just out of the blue? No, I think he had my number. He starts to get into this, well, uh, I'm here to apply for a job, and, and uh, I said, well, so you know the folks who live here? He says, no, but I knew uh, that they were looking for somebody to do some work. And I said, really, what kind of work do you do? He said, well, you know, driveway work, resurface driveways and cement, stones and things like that. And I'm thinking at this point, okay, here we go. I'm just going to let the, the line out a little bit here and see how far he takes it. And what's your name? My name is Michael. Michael. Michael Wiltsy. No, Michael Weary. Michael Weary. So you're saying this was somebody else, even though we know you were at the public library using a computer. And what you know is I was at a public library. That's what you may know. You don't know everything I know. So you want to tell me the real story now? Or you want to go with what you got? It's up to you. And what does the real story get me? It's not the first time somebody has tried to take that position. You know, that's an old email account. I don't use it anymore. But when you, you take them through the math of the situation, okay, this is your screen name, right, right. This is the communication that we have between somebody using your screen name and a young teen. And all of a sudden, you're here. You, not someone else. Your story doesn't make that much sense. It now, maybe I'm skeptical. You, you know, I don't know, but it doesn't I don't make know sense. who you are. I don't even know who you are. I came in here, I was just now told, that gate's open, come on in, okay? I mean, just, it just defied logic. And at some point in the interview, you could see that he knew that this wasn't going to work out to be a great story for him. What this sounds like, Michael, is that you were coming here to have sex with a 13-year-old boy. Hell no. But why would you say these things to somebody you thought was a 13-year-old boy? Somebody else that was also on the computer for, in, in, in the library used, been, been using my name. So it's one big mix-up. I'm telling you what I came here for, and I don't have sex with anybody. Not me. And you, if you were, if you were anybody had access to my record, you look at my record, you figure out that the only time I had any problems with anybody was a young woman, unless you look at my adolescent stuff. And then I was an adolescent. So you've got a record. I'm guessing I do. You're guessing you do. Yeah, I have a record. You know. You had a problem with a young woman. A long time ago. Do you do time for that? Don't you know? I'm asking you. Why are you asking? I want to know the truth. Yes, I've done time for that. Straight up, I've done time for that. He was a, well, a young woman. Ain't no kids in me. We know he's got a, a criminal history. And then we have this chat. It's right there in black and white. You're talking to a boy named Luke. 
I don't know of when they would. I I'll be there as close to 11 as possible, so I will need your number so that I can call you when I'm near the bus stop. I will look for you, and we will discreetly go to your room and talk. And we'll talk about whatever pops up and stimulates you into whatsoever you want. You are reading me something that somebody wrote. I'm sorry to hear that. So I need exact bus stop near our place as I get off. I'll walk toward your street, so you also must tell me how to get to your bed from there. Well, I don't know about what everybody that this person has said to a 13 I never even met a 13 -year -old. Well, the reason why I'm so curious about all of this is that I'm Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC, and we've been doing a story on computer predators, adults who go online to try to meet young teenagers. Now, if you have anything else you'd like to say for yourself, we'd love to hear it. If not, you're obviously free to leave and go on your way. I'm not doing anything. Now, if there's not a Scott Pedersen. Do you have Scott Pedersen's name written down? No, I have an address. I can leave an address. That, that's all I was planning to do. There's no Scott Pedersen. I can't leave no phone number, no address. So you never wrote down Scott Pedersen's name anywhere? No. He maintained until the very end of the interview that he was just a dusty, determined traveler who uh, came from a long ways away to try to get honest work. The problem with that, of course, is that, that none of it makes sense. When you put it all together, the chat, his crumbling story, and the fact that, you know, he's the guy sitting in the kitchen across from me, you know, it doesn't look good for him. The young man I thought was supposed to be here. What's that person's name? Scott was supposed to be here, and he didn't mention his name. I just said, look, at Scott. Who's Scott? The guy I was supposed to meet. I was told. You work construction? I was looking for any kind of job. Huh? You don't work right now? No.